what does God's grace teach? Hmm, interesting subject here. Well, what's the most famous, famous portion of Scripture on the thing of God's grace? The one that most people are going to turn you to. Ephesians chapter 2. What do you say about salvation? Salvation is by grace through faith. Absolutely. They say, well, it's faith alone. The Bible doesn't say that. Grace through faith. <laughs> but let's check this out. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. They always like to stop at verse 9. Kind of an interesting thing. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Certainly. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good profession. Good faith, good works. I'll talk more about this. Just con Let's continue. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I had this one hypocrite years ago, and he said, you see the key word is should. Doesn't mean that we have to have good works. It just says should. <laughs> Give me a break, <laughs> people. You know, but think about this. What are the works that are being condemned there in verse 9? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Who boasts about their works? Get back to that in just a minute. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in good works? What are the good works in verse 10? Let me break it down for you. The good works of verse 10 are you're giving up certain things. You're changing your life. You're sanctifying certain things out of your life. Those are the good works. You see, you're walking in them. That him that stole, steal no more. You know? That's what you're doing there. Now, instead of the guy stealing, he's laboring with his own hands and he's giving to people that need. I mean, wouldn't that be a, a flip? Some guy's a bank robber and he gets saved and now he's going out and he's working hard and he's going and he's giving money to people that he stole from or giving money to homeless people and whatever else. What a change. He's walking in it. It's a new life, you see. The works of verse 10 are changes that have happened since you've gotten saved. You're no longer a drunkard. You're no longer a fornicator. You're no longer stealing from people or lying to people or cheating people or whatever. Those are the good works that you are walking in. But what about the good works that people do that they boast with? I'm a, I'm a soul winner. I've won thousands to the Lord. I have the biggest church building in the entire city here, the biggest Baptist church. We run more people in Sunday school than anybody else. I go to confession every Sunday. Every, every day I go to the confessional and I, I make sure that my sins are confessed to my priest. I pray the rosary. I do good works. I uh, feed the poor. I take care of the needy. I, what are they doing? Those are works that people are boasting about. Just like any lost Catholic will do or lost churchgoer. See, there's two types of works there. The one that you boast about, that you think that that's going to merit your salvation, and you never are quite sure, but you're hoping that your good works outweigh your bad works. That's verse 9. Verse 10 is, God saved me. Now, He's changed my life. And those works that He's created, that He's ordained that we should walk in them, those are the changes that He brings about in my life. Not that I'm doing of my own free will or whatever. No, he changes me and now I'm going to walk in those things. I'm going to change my life, change direction. You see? Go to Titus chapter 2. This is a real good one here. Titus chapter 2 beginning in verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Sorry, Calvin. Uh, God's grace appears to all men. If you don't know about Calvinism, it's one of the most retarded bunches of nonsense that's ever come out, anybody ever came out with. And I'll say retarded because it is on that thing. I'm not cutting on people with Down syndrome. Calvinism was retarded. 
Okay, um, the guy was had problems. He came up comes up with a system that God has chosen certain people for salvation, and He's chosen other people, the vast majority of people. He chose them for damnation, and there's nothing that those people can do to get saved. They're just they're elected to damnation. So they get up there, and the Lord says, "Depart from me, cursed and everlasting fire." They say, "Well, yeah, you created me this way. You know, it's not the devil made me do it; it's God made me do it. I mean, literally." Uh, that's what they, they teach. Uh, the thing of predestination and things in, in Calvinism, that's literally what they teach. Hitler did what he did because God made him do it. Um, any murderer or any rapist or any drug addict, or whatever, God made him do it. Nobody has free will, you see, according to John Calvin. The guy was nuts in the head. <laughs> and you have so many verses of Scripture. Here's another one that say, uh, no, actually it's appeared to all men. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Calvin was an idiot. And anybody that follows him is pretty much an idiot too. Verse 12. Teaching us. What's the teaching us? The grace of God. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. Huh? Works? Denying ungodliness and worldly lusts? That's not salvation. What is that? God's grace comes to you and you realize, I'm getting salvation and I don't deserve it. It's a free gift of God, you see? But I don't deserve it. And what does it teach you? That I need to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Why? Because that's what got me in the mess I was in before I got saved. That's what was wrecking my life back then. And God did something for me that I didn't deserve. He gives me His grace. Hmm. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Paul elsewhere calls this world this present evil world. And boy, when you get to studying things and you get to studying history and whatever else and things that are going on, it's a very evil world. It's an extremely evil world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, you'll understand that if you're saved. And I very foolishly said in the past, it's not a salvation issue. What you believe as far as the timing of the rapture. Uh, foolishly said that. Uh, the resurrection, which is really what it's all about, uh, is part of your salvation. Okay, Paul wrote uh, about uh, now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. You say, what's that? Um, your salvation is the resurrection. That's the part that redeems this corrupt, vile body. This corruptible shall put on incorruption, you see. The thing that you're struggling with as a Christian, the thing that you wake up every day and you say, oh man, why did I have a dream like that? That was just, oh, I don't even think these thoughts. You know, I had one two nights ago, I think, just terrible, horrible, weird dream, you know, perverse, just terrible. Stuff. And you go, where on earth did I, I never even, you know, in all my most wicked times of looking at pornography and watching Hollywood movies, I, I never saw anything that wicked before. How's this stuff getting into my head? You know, and you wake up, oh, you know, and then you do some prideful thing and you, and you, and you just, what do you, and, and what do you come to the conclusion of as, as a Bible believing Christian? You say, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I'm so sick and tired of this. Just, oh, yeah, I'm enjoying myself and it's beautiful out here and thank the Lord for his creation and everything else. But I'm looking for the blessed hope. I'm not looking for, oh, I just, when the Antichrist shows up, then we'll be right. We'll be, we'll, us, us post tribbers we'll be right. Oh, we're going to be so, you know, vindicated. And, and the, the pre-trib preachers, they'll, they'll go into nothing and, and we'll, be, we'll be great. And then we'll see the seals and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you're, well, they're lost. That's the whole thing. Posties are lost. Uh, I firmly believe that. I mean, unless they're brand new saved and just got deceived or something, posties are lost. And I say posty, meaning post-tribbers. You should be looking for the blessed hope. Why? Because the blessed hope means I'm done with this corruptible body. Verse 14. 
who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Let me just stop there for a minute. The great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Two names mentioned there. And yet, who gave himself for us. Hmm. Because they're the same being. Some of you aren't going to get that either. <laughs> who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Why would he redeem us from all iniquity if we can just continue in sin without any conscience? Uh, we get a, a sin-free pass or something? You're a sinner up to the point of salvation. He died for you on the cross, and now you no longer have to have a conscience about your sin. You can just go on and sin and think, no, he redeemed us from all iniquity. And keep reading. And purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good professions. Uh, no, zealous of good church attendance. Zealous of good independent fundamental Baptist preaching. Uh, no, it says zealous of good works. You say, what kind of works? Oh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 kind of works. Not the kind that you boast about. I mean, you're going to go to the store and you say, I've been, I've, I've, I've stopped looking at the pornography. I got victory over pornography. Think anybody's going to care? They're going to look at you like you're weird. Hey, I, I guess what? Guess what? I, I stopped, uh, you know, stealing. I stopped this. I stopped that. Huh? But you get some Catholic coming through the, the saint and they got their little rosary on or they got their ash, you know, Wednesday thing. They got the on their forehead. People go, oh, I thank you for your religious convictions and things and whatever. Or you get some omelet pervert and whatever else and they're, they're walking around and they, they got their, their polyester clothing on 97 degrees outside and they're sweating for the greater glory of God. You know, and they, and they get in their Amish buggy and they, I'll live without electricity because it's meriting my salvation and Certainly, if I suffer this much, I won't go to hell when I die. <laughs> oh, yeah, you will. And, you know, that's what they think. Okay, I'm not exaggerating. That's exactly what they think. I was raised around them. All right. Zealous of good works. We should serve the Lord. There needs to be a changed life there. Verse 15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke. With all authority, let no man despise thee. You say, well, then nobody should be against you. Well, that's not what it's saying there. It's just simply saying, let no man despise thee. Don't care what people think, in other words. You preach the truth no matter what people think. That's what's going on there. Very interesting. All these uh, free grace people, uh, they won't even talk about the thing of what grace teaches. They don't want to talk about that because they want a salvation where there's no calling upon the name of the Lord. There's just a profession. And they can go on and they can sin without any conscience at all. They get saved and the Lord says, okay, here's your free sin card. You can go on and you can do whatever you want in your life because you've made that profession. You didn't even have to ask me. You just took salvation for yourself. You said, I believe it. I profess it. I'm done. Now I can do whatever I feel like doing. Nope. It's not the way it works. The good works that the Bible condemns, or the works, I should say, that the Bible condemns, are those that people boast about. Their church membership, how many souls they've won to the Lord, the rosary, how many times they go to confession, how much good stuff they've done, their standards of dress, their standards of living and whatever else and all that other stuff. Really something. Uh, you hear somebody talking about uh, free grace or whatever else, I'd run from them. You're dealing with very wicked people when you get into that whole movement there. Okay, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.